you can help, but watch your health very, very closely. Everybody is concerned. But going to the doctor is not really without risks right now, right? Muscle testing may give you some assurances and answers. What I love about it is you can, everyone could do it. You could do it wherever you are. You know, it's really easy squeezy. And, you know, a lot of times people are concerned with their allergies and it's really important to have a handle on this. So you, you can, this is empowering. It's a relatively newly researched technique that is expanding really quickly. Not many people know about it and only a few practitioners really specialize in it. That's why we asked New York's top muscle testing expert, Dr. Alicia Armistead, who is unbelievable. I'm telling you, listen to her. She is founder of Healing Hearts of New York, Healing Arts of New York City to join us today to tell us how we can do it. Again, wherever you are, you don't need expensive, you don't need equipment except for your hands, but we'll be telling you about that in a second. Um, she just opened up the new center on Madison Avenue and we'd like you all to come when you can. Um, we're all dreaming about the different treatments that she has available there that you guys can definitely try. And they're cutting edge and really important and impactful and, and newsworthy. Um, in the meantime, we're excited to help you really listen to your body and really get down to the bottom of what might be causing you symptoms, discomfort, illnesses. This is stuff that you can find out. You don't, you don't need to go to a doctor. Muscle testing will allow you to determine exactly what your body needs to holistically improve your health from conditions like joint pain and skin issues, infertility, fatigue, bloating, and so much more. You know, a lot of times you just don't know, you know, things you've been eating all the time. You think, how could I possibly be allergic to them? And you are. And it kind of, it's kind of crummy when you find these things out because you're accustomed to eating a certain way and you've got to change things a bit, but you'd rather have that than too much inflammation. Muscle testing is a way to get biofeedback from the body. It can be used to help you figure out what organs need help. We're gonna explain that to you, which um, is really interesting and really help your body detox and support the right nutrition for health and use food as medicine. We've been hearing a lot about that, right? Your food, what Hippocrates said, your food should be your medicine and your medicine should be your food. But right now I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Armistead. She's gonna teach us how to use, um, to get this biofeedback from our bodies and figure out how to give our organs the help they really need. Thank you, Dr. Armistead. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks everyone for coming, um, especially tonight at seven o'clock or at least Eastern Standard Time, taking time out of your day uh, to know more about muscle testing. So professionally, I'm actually a chiropractor um, who specializes in this muscle testing and we use it nutritionally and um, to get that biofeedback from the body to make very clinically designed programs for you. And our way of nutrition isn't just supporting the body with the right food, but also what toxins is the body holding on to and how can we use nutrition to help detox the body and then support the body. And as we go through a nutrition program for somebody, it can change. It's not like, okay, stay away the, from these foods forever or else. Um, and using this type of muscle testing and getting the biofeedback from the body, um, we can help with headaches, we can help with stomach ache, we can help with depression and anxiety, which are things, you know, people don't usually think of depression, you know, so I should eat better. But part of all of this uh, knowledge with the muscle testing is realizing what you use in your daily life and what you eat really does make a difference uh, with your nutrition. And so as a chiropractor who does this muscle testing, I've been doing it for 15 years and I love it. I got into it actually because I had asthma as a child. And I was probably about 12 when I ended up in that hospital with my first asthma attack and it was really scary and not being able to breathe and going in and out of emergency rooms on steroids which i absolutely actually hated um, i still remember uh, the steroids made me emotionally crazy 
I'm, I would laugh and cry at the same time. And when you're 14 and you have hormones raging and you don't know what to do, it was, I actually, the medicine did not help. It actually made me feel worse and it was confusing. And it took me a while to even realize it was the prednisone. And so wanting an alternative to you know my asthma and the fact that it wasn't getting better and it was actually getting worse, uh, my mother took me to a chiropractor who does this type of muscle testing. And I just fell in love because I finally had answers to what was going on or how I could actually help my body instead of just taking the medicine as needed. And I remember still looking at my mother after that first appointment and being like, okay, that's what I want to do. So I've just been one of those lucky ones that have known what I wanted to do my whole life, pretty much, and mm -hmm. uh, went to college and then opened up my business in New York City and um, have been there the whole time. And I love it. Even during you know, the pandemic, I actually feel like it's more necessary now more than ever. And to bring your awareness to what you use and to what you eat, making a difference in your health. Um, a lot of times people feel like when they do this big nutrition program, like, can I, you know, do Western medicine? Can I continue my uh, medication? And it doesn't interfere, which is really, really nice because I give supplements that come from an organic farm and because we want to use food to really heal. And what happens with the muscle testing and getting that biofeedback from the body in the office is um, we can use any muscle in the body, actually just easiest to use the arm. And so the patient puts their arm out and they're usually laying down, but it could be seated or standing. And if the patient has their arm out, then I'm pressing on it. And as I press on the arm, this is like the indicator muscle. And my other arm goes on the thyroid or goes on the heart, or maybe their stomach aches, but you can't see my hand on my stomach, but you know, maybe they have a headache. You know, we go to the point of pain, maybe they have neck pain. So we just put a little bit of pressure. Let's pretend the thyroid. And so if I put a little bit of pressure on the thyroid, if there's a problem here, the body sends a signal up to the brain, wants to protect the thyroid, that if I push here and I push on the patient's arm, the arm will give a little bit. The arm goes weak. The body doesn't care about the arm. It wants to protect the thyroid. So that lets me know, okay, what organs go weak and what organs go strong. And then the question really is, okay, what's bothering the thyroid? And so, like I said, we detox. And so in the office, we have homeopathic test kits. And so I know you can't really read it, but here's all the foods that we actually test for. And they're in little glass vials. Here's bacteria, viruses, parasites even we look for. And then we also have other test kits that have heavy metals. What are, Keisha, what are some examples of foods that you test for? And so uh, we can test, uh, well, the most common that actually uh, people have to stay away from, like cleanse from, is wheat, white flour, and white refined sugar. And I think it's just in the American diet, you know, like we can eat wheat or white flour, you know, three times a day, every day. And in America, actually, I've seen where American white flour is weaker than like Italian wheat or white flour because American... I don't know, like our FDA just has not as strict guidelines. We've genetically modified it more. Um, so we can even be like very specific, like eat this wheat, but don't eat that wheat. And um, we look for eggs and nuts and seeds. And um, people don't like me when I test for their coffee or their alcohol. Uh, and the idea is I always say, okay, it's not forever, just for right now. And it's like your own personal cleanse. And then like, I'm like, okay, do two eggs a week. Let's see how it goes. Let's do three eggs a week. So that's kind of what it looks like in the office. And um, the body can pick up on the energy through the glass. Or, and it, I almost think of it as wavelengths. You know, and the body is strong, it automatically goes strong. And then if the body is reacting to something, because I'll put it on the body like this, then the arm goes weak. And then I'm like, okay, it's because something in here is vibrating with the body. And that's really hard to kind of picture, but I always think of like E equals MC squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Einstein was pretty awesome. And so anything with mass, has energy. And so I literally, again, think of wavelengths of energy coming into the body and the body automatically has a reaction or doesn't have a reaction. You know, the arm goes weak or the arm goes strong. 
And it's weird because we're used to our arm being voluntary, you know, having control over it. Um, but in this case, you know, it's automatic. The body, you know, we don't have control over the arm. And, um, you know, sometimes patients are like, oh, you know, and I'm like, no, just, just match my pressure. Don't overpower me. This is not a, you know, arm wrestling match because <laughs> nobody wants to be weak, right? So we always want to be as strong as possible. Um, and so it's, it's kind of, it's fun that way. And so in muscle testing, uh, you know, to have the actual coordination, I don't know if any of you guys have kids that I'm talking to, but what I'm gonna show you tonight is a lot of fun. And kids around the age of seven, they start having the coordination for this. You know, they just, otherwise, you know, they don't actually, you know, pressing on the arm and actually matching my pressure and resisting or what I'm gonna show you today with self muscle testing. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today is I wanted, you know, to give you an idea of what happens in the office and how we use it to really help people heal. But it can be a tool that you guys can use for everything. And I literally mean everything. Like my answer for everything is, oh, let's muscle test it. Let's see what the body says. And, um, you know, I have two kids and, you know, I have a 12 year old and a two year old. The 12 year old is so embarrassed to go grocery shopping with me because I am sitting there muscle testing stuff. <laughs> and, um, you know, it probably took her about eight years before she realized like, oh, only mom does this. Like, you know, muscle testing was her reality. Um, and so I'm obviously passionate about it. And I wanted you guys to ha experience it. And so um, I mean, that's what's fun is like when a patient actually feels it, like, do you feel that strong? Do you feel that weak? You know, so that's really, really cool. Has anyone actually been muscle tested? You know, oh, great. And okay, yeah. So a few, yeah. yeah. Have you guys, yeah. How, how went, was it for you? I went eight years ago, actually, when I was in college, because I was having a lot of like stomach issues. And I went to my chiropractor and I think it's like the most amazing thing. So I like, I'm so excited to be here, but um yeah, he basically found like a ton of like formaldehyde in my body and like toxins. And I kind of just like, that's when I kind of went like more non-toxic with my beauty care and, and everything. And I noticed such a shift in, in things for me. And then recently I went to somebody in the city who was helping me with like a ton of conditions. Like we found parasites, we found um, weird things like connected like bacteria in my brain. I don't really know. <laughs> I went, I went on like a crazy diet. I eliminated so much. I went as on like 60 supplements a day at one point and then COVID happened and I kind of just like needed a break for a little bit and, and I like kind of reset my body but I I want to like get back into it and I'm like I literally am in Florida and I packed like the vials in my in my luggage and like made it through security so <laughs> <laughs> oh good good and it helped you you know it sounds like actually what you went through or what you're you know going through is kind of intense but yeah you've noticed and it's helped you for sure yeah good Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I had it too. Um, and I like for years have had a lot of digestive issues and I, for me, it's funny because it was coffee and eggs that I was like having a lot of issues with. Um, and also honey, which was a surprise because I like, I love having honey in my tea every morning because I don't drink coffee anymore. <laughs> um, but that like, it was life-changing, like taking all of the things that we spoke about out of my body. And it actually turned out that I had an overgrowth of candida as well, which isn't something that gastros test for. So having to like do the candida diet really helped, you know, do the detox and it was muscle testing was very pivotal in making that change. So it's like changed everything for me, which has been amazing. Well, thanks guys. No, it's good to, you know, get a good variety of people who have actually experienced the, you know, and felt better and, you know, how this is all new. So in self muscle testing, there's different ways to do it with your hands. And so you have to think about how we're actually muscle testing these fingers. And so the easiest one for me to do that I do on a daily basis is when what we call the O finger technique. And what you do is in your non-dominant hand and put your thumb and your forefinger together. And so these are the muscles that we'll actually be testing. And so don't press so hard, you know, where it's like so tight and you cramp up, but don't press so light, you know, somewhere in that middle piece where you're actually making a connection. And then you take your dominant hand and you test it by pulling on it. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you guys are doing a good job. Okay, good. And so 
and then yeah you're making that connection and I don't go through you know this is what strong looks like now if I'm gonna we're gonna go to the vials in a second and so if I'm holding a vial in my hand and my body doesn't like it you'll feel this I'm exaggerating but like it goes weak like you can't hold these together again and it, try not to really press really hard otherwise you'll get strong no matter what you do and you'll get if it's too light then you get weak no matter what you do and so it is it does take practice in that case and when we muscle test these I asked Nikki to actually not label what it was so I didn't know if that was interesting to you guys. It's like, okay, number one, number two, what is this? But it's almost like I wanted you not to know what it was so that you couldn't have an emotional reaction to it. You know, like Nikki said, like, um, you know, honey was really surprising for her. So if we were to test honey, I don't want it to automatically be a yes because you just love your, you know, honey and your tea. So it's almost like a blind testing. Um, I've definitely learned that from my 12 year old uh, who came to me and was holding chocolate, you know, and sugar in my household is very, very limited. And she's like, look, I can have it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but you know, she wanted it to go strong. So it did. So it's like, okay, just clear the mind, really just stay open, stay neutral. And what I want you guys to pick out in your vials, you got the, you got your little box. Okay, look for number two. I guess I should pull them out. Okay. Okay, everyone have number two? Did I take the longest? Okay, Nancy? Okay, good. Hold on. Okay, so, and so in one hand, you put the pinky and thumb together. And I guess it doesn't matter either hand that way. It, and it, it can go through clothing, but, and it could be on your lap too, if you wanted, but for demonstration purposes, I'm holding it in my hand. And so then I put it together and you'll, you'll get a little room and you go through and I go weak on this. My body doesn't like this, where if I put it down nice and strong, so if this is all new to you guys, what we want to do is feel it, feel it strong, and then hold it and see whether or not you go weak. Do you get, and then do you guys feel a difference? Because it's hard, because maybe you go strong on it and there therefore is no difference. Okay, so do you think you might feel it? Yes. I was going to say, I think I'm stronger holding it. Is that my imagination? Is that a thing? <laughs> um, no, it's usually very, <laughs> black, sorry. It's usually very black and white. It's like strong or weak, not strong or stronger. Okay. So then, then, I'm, I'm nor then I guess I'm normal. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you, you feel the strong and then you pick it up and then you don't know if you're weak or you're strong. I'm weak. I'm the same, I think. Okay, so then you're holding it, which means you don't react to it. Your body is okay with this. Great. Okay, so you guys want to know what it is? Uh, sugar. <laughs> so yes, go ahead and have as much. You know, don't go <laughs> over, over. But yeah, sugar is okay, and my body doesn't like it. My body also doesn't like fruit sugar, so um, it is what it is. And uh, that's what's nice about testing, you know, different types of sugars. So white refined sugar. And so go ahead and pull out number eight. Okay, so pinky and thumb together. And I'm strong on this one. And so there's no difference. It's actually crazy because when I'm holding it, I feel my, like, I feel my muscles like being weak. It's like so, really weird. So this is honey. There's no way that I could hide this really, but I wanted to compare sugar, you know, artificial with natural. And so Nikki's feeling how weak she is with it. And it's something she can't have, but I can. Do you guys feel the difference yet? Maybe. Maybe. So it's your your non-dominant hand is the is the pinky and the 
and the thumb and then the right hand is or the, your dominant hand is the first finger and thumb so yeah they're both the same oh okay both for, okay both but does it okay. matter which one you're holding the food in no and like i said it could even be on your lap and go through clothing but how does how how does that work <laughs> how does your body know what you're holding i know i literally think of it as wavelengths Ooh. yeah quantum physics i'm not <laughs> But I literally, yeah, I literally think of just energy, vibes, good vibes or bad vibes. <laughs> so, I okay. Think, okay, okay. It's maybe just, you can feel it? Maybe, I might be a little weak on honey, but I might be convincing myself of that now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It, it's you hard. Know, uh, I, think, I think it might be fun for Amy to try a bunch of different ones without even thinking about it and feel the difference. Sure. Yeah. Because, because everyone... This one, this one is really rough for me. <laughs> you went ahead, Nancy. But, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Okay, so let's I'm just poorly behaved. I'm a real renegade. <laughs> you just told on yourself. Okay, let's just go in order. It feels a number one. And I'm okay on it. And the only, if you think you got a week, then put it weak, like you, you know, it opens up, put it down and feel this strong. Cause you, this should always be strong. And then pick it up and feel it again and see if you feel a difference. And this is soy, soy flour. So this one that we could, you know, disguise in flower form. Um, number three, we can try that one, put your, and I'm strong with this one. And it's corn. Okay. Am I going too fast? You guys okay? Okay. Number four. A white powder. Good. I'm nice and strong. This is cow milk. Oh. So we could, yeah, hide that one too. And let's go to number seven. Yeah, darn, I'm weak on this one. <laughs> this is wheat. White flour, pasta, pretzels, bagels is wheat chlorinated. So whenever wheat shows up, you know, I always say no white flour either. Okay, so this has to do with the foods. I wanted you guys to feel it. Do you think you sort of maybe felt it? Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. And you'll just have to, you know, keep playing with it in that. And, and you know, it's almost like I, I wanted a real no and I wanted a real yes so you guys could feel the contrast. So uh, just keep playing with it. Um, besides foods, um, it also does depend on the products that we use and any type of cleaning products and um, even beauty products and lotions, toothpaste even makes a difference. You don't know how many times I have to tell patients to change their toothpaste because their toothpaste has titanium in it, which is a heavy metal. It's a whitener right? So the whitening toothpaste or the whitening gum even. Uh, it's one of the last ingredients, titanium dioxide, which is on the toothpaste box that you threw out when you bought the toothpaste. So a good website is ewg.org. Um, they tell you like of all the products you could ever imagine that ever exist. And then they give you a score and zero and one is very natural. And then 10 Nine, they have the research and they show how this product has carcinogenics in it. And so what we use makes a difference. I mean, you slather that lotion on, you know it's going into that body. The skin absorbs it. And so that's what number six and number five are, are products. And so go ahead and let's do number six. And I go weak on this one. This is aluminum. 
And it's amazing to me. That's what makes my job so much fun is some people test negative for this and some people have no problem with this. They can eat it all they want. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's in our kitchen, right? We use aluminum foil, um, aluminum takeout, and, um, you know, we drink aluminum uh, cans. And so that's Cooking also- it. Cooking it. People yeah. cooking it. Yeah, yeah. Stainless steel is okay. Teflon is okay, but if it gets scratched underneath that is aluminum. Yeah, the aluminum baking sheets. Um, yeah, so aluminum is a big one. Oh, and it's in your deodorant. And um, breast cancer, I mean, it's all like, you know, right there. <laughs> um, so it's something we have to be really careful of. And so um, the next one is number five, the last one. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you brought up breast cancer and things you have to be. If you are not um, reacting to the aluminum, does that mean that you, I mean, you still don't want it in your deodorant, but are you more at risk of that deodorant if you are reacting to it? Okay, that's a good question. And so if you go strong on the aluminum, the way I think of it is it's not like aluminum is healthy for you. Um, I don't even think of aluminum as neutral. What I think is your body, for whatever reason, the biochemistry is if you use aluminum, it's aluminum in, right? And it's aluminum out and your body can handle it. Like there won't be any adverse effects. There won't be any upsets. There won't be any aluminum absorption into the tissues. Uh, aluminum in the brain, that's Alzheimer's. I mean, that's how I literally look at all these toxins. You know, and the whole point of health is get rid of toxins and with the right nutrition, the body can heal. And so, you know, that's why it's so important, not only what we eat, but what we use. So, yeah, no, and it's, yeah. And it's, so if you don't react to number six, it's because your body can handle it, where maybe your body can't handle a different toxin, you know, and that's what makes it so interesting. Everybody's body is different. So the last one, Let's try it. And I'm okay with this one. So when patients can't do aluminum or, you know, aluminum is showing up as one of the layers I have to detox, I suggest number five, parchment paper. And so um, they want to keep their baking sheets, you know, they don't want to go out and buy ceramic or glass to go in the oven. So then I tell them lay parchment paper parchment paper down and then you know they can use their aluminum cooking sheets um and then you know some cooks are like oh but i need to cover my roast in the oven and i'm like okay put it in parchment and then seal it with the aluminum um and so yeah no these lifestyle changes really can make a difference and that's why i love the muscle testing and um like i said you know try it with your toothpaste try it with all different products it's really, really amazing. What if I'm reacting to both of these as more weak, the aluminum uh, and parchment, which I'm shocked because I always use parchment paper. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, it's possible. Um, I would try to do a glass or a baking stone or something then, yeah. Oh, so when you just said, I always use parchment paper, parchment paper tends to be more neutral but there is something about like always using it like you don't give the body a chance to detox it detox it um like you know and i'm like okay no eggs no this no that they're like oh my god i eat you know eggs every morning for breakfast and so rotating food is really important in my office so maybe like take a break from parchment paper and then just kind of rotate it in uh any other questions I did actually have a quick question. Yeah. So when when taking like other objects to test with, yeah. um, do they like can they be in their casing? Like you said, um, toothpaste. So like, do I need to take the toothpaste like literally like put it on my finger, or like can I you do it through the um, through the um, tube? Yeah. Sometimes the packaging can actually block the energy. And the packaging that I would be looking for to block it is black. Um, if you think about colors, black absorbs all the colors. That's what black is and white, you know, reflects all the colors. So I literally think of black absorbing. So then the energy hits it and then it actually doesn't go through. So 
um, if you have a black packaging, I would take that toothpaste and put it directly on the skin. If you're not quite sure, you know, when you're trying to self muscle test, it, you know, maybe it's the packaging, maybe it's not. Just go ahead and put it directly on your fingers. Yeah, it does. It can make a difference. I yeah. have sort of a slightly related question. I've also heard of muscle testing to kind of help figure out like past traumas and things like that. How, do you do that as well? And how is that related to this? Yeah, so that kind of takes muscle testing, you know, to a whole nother level. And um, which I love that question. Um, and so in doing the nutrition with the muscle testing, it's called the technique I'm certified in is called nutrition response testing. If I was to do it chiropractically, it's a different technique I'm certified in called applied kinesiology. So we have all these like little different specialties of muscle testing. Mm -hmm. Muscle testing started in the 1960s from a chiropractor who was using it chiropractically. And then we've totally like blown off the lid, you know, and found other ways to use the muscle testing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's like the best <laughs> secret in the world. It's okay. And so what she just asked about, about emotional traumas, I do believe that the body can hold stress, right? And the body cells have memory. And so there is another technique I use in my office called psych K, psych as in psychology. And it, the idea, you know, it takes it to a whole nother level. Like I showed you guys like actual products, but if you can, again, think of wavelengths, sound is a vibration, right? That hits our ear and we hear it, if we use words, our body can pick up on it. Okay, so you guys ready? You're gonna do your pinky and thumb together mm -hmm. and you're gonna say yes, yes. Yes. And you should get strong. And if you say no, you should go weak. No. If you go strong on both, then you're holding too tightly or you're not pushing hard enough. And so we can use words to, again, pick up on what trauma is stuck in the body, um, meaning uh, belief systems, sub, it's like things that are stuck in the subconscious that the body is still holding on to, which is really good when somebody should be healing and somehow they're not, or you know, self sabotage, or you know, I can't, you know, I can't get to bed on time even though I know I'm hurting myself, you know, that type of habitual stuff. Um, and so like we can use words like, you know, I deserve to heal or even I want to heal. Maybe they do, subconsciously, they don't actually want to heal. Maybe they actually get something out of being sick or feeling pain. They get attention, they get time off from work or, you know, things like that can, you know, really the, the body holds on to and, and responds. And so that takes it to the whole nother level of that mind, you know, and what you think and what's, you know, stuck in the body. So yeah, that's how we use it. But this is supposed to be 101. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I just was wondering how the two were related because I'd, I'd heard of that kind of muscle testing. Thank you. So yeah, you're welcome. I believe what, what there's maybe six or seven types of muscle testing. I don't know if you want to just, I know you mentioned two of them. I, are there okay so uh, yeah in the off well in my office particularly or just in general in what you do okay so what i do is the nutrition response testing the psych k the applied kinesiology which is putting the chiropractic and a muscle testing the joint to figure out how to adjust it so that way i'm not just feeling my hands and just pushing you know i can be very specific with the muscle testing and figuring out how to adjust the spine and open up the muscles. And then the fourth one that I didn't mention is called morphogenic field technique, which is not about touching or pressing on the organs, but actually muscle testing the energy field of the body, the energy on the outside. And the idea is, and I, you know, I've been doing the nutrition and the applied kinesiology for 15 years, but I got where I saw how people got stuck, you know, and I'm like, okay, why can I only help 85% of my patients? You know, like where's this 15%? Like what, you know, what tools am I missing? And the idea with morphogenic field technique and actually muscle testing the energy of the body is you're testing the vibration of the cells. So it's like, I can get in deeper and with what the body's trying to tell me at the cellular level 
when I test the energy fields of the body. Again, quantum physics, believing that everything that has mass has an energy field. I mean, aura, you know, is another word for it or, you know, um, and so if I can muscle test the cellular level, um, I'm getting in deeper because when I do and I press on the organs, I, you know, it's two levels higher. Um, maybe when I push on the thyroid, I'm not getting the response because it's really stuck in the cells. Cells make tissue, tissue makes organs. And so that's why testing the energy field, I can get these deeper uh, answers, which I tend not to use MFT or morphogenic field technique, unless I'm like, I'm not finding what I think I should be when I actually press on the organ. So there's lots of different ways to use muscle testing. Um, and I just want people to know what it is and, you know, feel it for themselves and realize that the body is trying to tell them something, you know, um, you know, it's like, I have a patient come in and there's, you know, uh, period issues and fertility issues. And then I'm like, okay, well, what about, you know, the headaches you get twice a week, you know, like, and people just get normalized to their pain. And I'm like, your body's telling you something, there's something that we can do. So it's also like just opening up that the fact that you have a relationship with your, you know, body is and bringing up that awareness is like part of what I think is missing. And why we're still in a pandemic. And I want yeah. people to take advantage and to learn how to take care of themselves. Yes, Nancy. What what kind of illnesses have you been able to diagnose with? Um, you know, people said, you know, I, um, I have headaches or, you know, I have, um, I have a little pain. Um, I, I don't know what to call it in, in my back on, a wing, on one of my wings, like towards the middle. The shoulder you know? bleed? Area? Yes, okay. yes, right there. And, and I, you know, I, I don't know what it is. And people say, well, is it a muscle pain? I, I don't really know what it is, and so, um, but what kinds of things can muscle testing diagnose? So we could do musco, muscular skeletal pain like that, and maybe it's structural, and maybe I need to go in and do chiropractic and open that all up, or maybe it's an inflammation from the gallbladder. You know, that's the fun thing about muscle testing is I'm not guessing. I, I mean, I look great to my patients because I'm very quick and I'm like, okay, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is what we're going to do. But it's because the muscle testing gives me all that information. So that when you gave that example, I was like, well, is it structural chiropractic or are we doing inflammation nutrition or maybe both? I mean, God, I wish all my patients would do both. I, you know, everybody can benefit from both tools. Um, but yeah, I mean, you name it and I, you know, I can, I can help. Um, you know, tinnitus and dizziness and uh, um, any type of blood disorders and bone issues and, you know, healings and cancer. And, you know, I, I've seen it all. And I mean, and, you know, when it comes to cancer stage four, you know, I'm just like, okay, let's just give you the best quality life, you know, and it's like, let's just support the body and see what happens, you know. And I've seen miracles and, you know, I've seen people pass, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's all part of the journey, but actually I, you need to know, even if you don't have any issues, like, let's say I'm healthy, like, you know, there's no reason for me to go get muscle tested. The concept of preventative health care and like you're healthy, let's keep your health. You know, that's what's cool about muscle testing too, is like you don't know aluminum is an issue, but let's go get muscle tested and like prevent those headaches or prevent that stomach ache. And I think what? people need to know that too, because they don't think about going and getting going to a chiropractor if they're healthy. But what if you don't have like a chronic complaint or chronic condition? Yeah. So I call those wellness patients. And the whole goal isn't to treat something, but to keep them well. Mm -hmm. Like maybe there's a zinc deficiency, you know, and I don't usually ask for blood work, but sometimes I'm like, mm, let me see what the blood work says. Mm -hmm. But usually muscle testing shows stuff that doesn't even show up on the blood work yet. You know, that's the thing. Doctors are looking for disease, you know, and patients like I have a stomach ache, you know, and the gastrointestinal is like, yeah, but I looked in nothing and the blood work shows fine. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, because you don't have, you know, 
an ulcer yet, but you're going to get one if we don't do X, Y, and Z. Um, so that's what's nice about functional medicine. Let's keep you functioning. It's a different way to look at it. Yeah, so, and then the whole paradigm of actually taking care of yourself when you're healthy. I mean, I think that's just a new concept that, you know, I want people to understand is a real thing. Because aging is a problem. What, what would be the... Um... What would be the symptoms, for instance, that you're allergic to? I, I believe this is soy. This uh, is a, number soy. one is soy. So what would be the symptoms that you're allergic to this? A lot of the times, soy, people have issues um, if they're gassy. For whatever reason, if you have trouble with soy, you actually get gas. Like bloat and not burping, but farting. Like your body is telling you like, I can't handle this. And I definitely learned this when, um, I don't know, about 15 years ago, a lot of the protein bars, power bars had the soy protein in it. Um, and actually this is interesting too. This is soy flour. Sometimes people will go weak on this, but then they can do edamame. They can do a different type of soy. So sometimes it's all about you know, the product and edamame, you know, the soybean is very, very natural where this is a little bit processed, right? Process. The flour. Process. And number two, what would be, um, what would be the, I, I believe that this is sugar. What are some common, you know, symptoms that you're allergic to this? Um, you know, you have, if you crave it, um, then you know that there's a blood sugar imbalance. Um, mm -hmm. And um, if you don't get it, you're cranky or you get headaches. There's actually a real thing called sugar withdrawal. It's a drug. It literally lights up the brain like uh, heroin would if uh, under MRI pictures. It's amazing. And the, uh, food companies know it. And that's why they put it in everything. Yeah. Um, when, you're, when you're helping people, does, can you talk to us about what role nutrition has in in it like i mean can what what big disease that you would think is impossible can be dealt with through proper nutrition yeah um gosh like um uh, a lot of people come to my office hopeless if they have lyme's disease mm. um you know chronic you know and they're just in tons of pain and they feel like they've gone everywhere um, or MS actually is a big one, you know, where the medical doctors kind of say, this is it for you, or, you know, the stage three or stage four cancer too. And like I said, you give the body the right support and it's, it is amazing what the body can do once you're aware of what to do and what not to do with your life, with your, the lifestyles. Yeah. So, so what is, what are the most common problems that people are coming to your office for? Uh, usually I accidentally specialize in digestion issues <laughs> um, because that's what everybody comes to me for. Uh, I think the gastroenterologists aren't seeing stuff. They aren't testing for parasites. If they are testing for parasites, they're missing it because whoever's doing the, you know, poop uh, tests, you know, don't really want to look at it, you know, imagine that type of job that really sucks. So, um, and then what's nice about the muscle testing is it's non-invasive, you get quick answers, you know, um, and I think a lot of people have bad gut flora. If it's not parasites, maybe it's yeast or candida or bad bacteria or viruses, Epstein-Barr virus really hides out in the body. Um, so that's, you know, one of the things that I really try to help patients with, you know, what patients are really embarrassed about is HPV. And mm -hmm. I feel like I treat tons of that. Um, people don't know what to do about it. They're nervous because it's precancerous cells, you know, maybe the stigma, I don't know, but I'm, you know, I, the goal is with HPV, get the body healthy, get the immune system strong, and it really can go away. So Western medicine thinks viruses don't go away, but I really believe that they can. You know, that is um, HPV, you're any gynecologist, any traditional gynecologist will say to you, you know, that's it, you, you know, you, it's never going away, or, they, or um, they, they'll try and burn it off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just 
strengthening your body is what you're saying is making the difference. Yeah. And even when they burn it off, they're like, well, it could come back, you know? So a lot of patients come to me after leap surgery and I'm like, okay, let's really help it, you know, not come back. Like let's get rid of it once and for all. And when you say detox, what does that generally include? So um, I'm literally figuring out what supplements can help a patient get rid of aluminum or get rid of formaldehyde, you know, um, we look at heavy metals and heavy chemicals. Um, when I'm trying to figure out what supplement to give them, it's not about like forcing or pushing the chemicals or metals out of the body, because if you force the body, um, you can uh, override the liver, you can hurt the kidneys. You know, I don't want to force the body to do anything. It's not made to do, you know? So it's all about opening up the body's detox pathways. So if I say, okay, no aluminum, and you're going to take this mineral, then that opens up the body's detox pathways. So again, you know, aluminum in, aluminum out. That's what a healthy body should do. We're in New York City. Do you know how toxic New York City is? <laughs> like, that's what I need my patients to do. Like, just get the body to be able to detox on its own. The goal is not to live in a bubble and to avoid all toxins. You know what other toxin is really hard and to avoid when it shows up is plastic. Um, and I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to buy a bag of peas, it's going to come in plastic, you know, so it is what it is, but try to avoid the plastic water bottles and try not to do the Ziploc bags. Again, plastic, we just overuse and we don't give the body a chance to actually get rid of it. But then there's the, also the trick of if we detox too fast, like I literally am pulling the aluminum up and out of the cells, it has to go into the bloodstream. At the bloodstream, it has to find its way to the liver. The liver is what detoxes it. The liver dumps it into the large intestine and you poop it out. But if that pathway is not working, the liver's overburden, there's too much aluminum in the blood, the liver can't get it out fast enough, or maybe the liver got it out fast enough, but you're literally not having a bowel movement every day, then I know that it's getting reabsorbed because you need to be eliminating. So that's actually, I, uh, I always say, how many bowel movements do you have a day? Like, that's like I'm like, I think I, uh, that's like one of my first questions I ask, because it's just so utterly important. And I think, you know, you know, people, people are like, oh, my bowel movements are good. But I'm like, no, how many? Like, and they're like, oh, every other day. And I'm like, nope, not good enough. Like, I need at least <laughs> one a day, one complete good one a day. But that's just how important all these detoxing things are. If we detox too fast, and like I said, we have too much in the bloodstream now, or we have too much sitting in the intestines that's not getting out, detox reaction can actually happen. Um, people uh, feel really tired. They feel like they're getting sick, but they don't fully get sick. Uh, they're irritable. They actually don't sleep well. Um, skin rashes can happen. Um, the skin is a detox organ. You know, so if the, it's not eliminating and through the bowels, the body will try to find a different way to get through it. And so if it is trying to come out through the skin, uh, you'll get skin uh, rashes. I mean, and that's what uh, eczema and psoriasis can be too. You know, that long term, I think, okay, what is the body trying to detox that it's having a hard time doing? Yeah, really, That that's good information because... It's a, it's a fright. It's frightening that you could be detoxing and then detox too much. But then if you, um, they say there's something called a wellness crisis when you start detoxing, which you're supposed to feel crummy, but how crummy are you supposed to feel? Right. No. And sometimes I tell patients like, okay, we're going to start detoxing. If you feel any of this, just know that it's part of detoxing, right? Because they just started taking these supplements and then they feel worse. They think the supplements are not good for them, you know? And so then that's one reason why I do try to help people through the detox because they already feel like crap. And most of the time they feel like crap for years before they actually come to me. We have another question from the audience about the plastic. You know, if it's so common and so many people react to it, how do we know we're responding to the allergies, allergens in the plastic vials and not the plastic itself? Yes. So on the, for the testing that you had, yeah, we did get plastic because 
you know, we were afraid it was just going to break if it had glass and we didn't want any broken glass. So this is plastic, but these vials here are glass and uh, glass does not interfere. So when I actually am testing, hold on one second. We have all these different heavy chemicals are on the top and heavy metals are on the bottom. I mean, the heavy metals that you guys probably haven't even heard, like polonium. But to figure out if it really is plastic, this is the plastic file. I don't know if you guys can actually see it. So that's why I'm like, okay, if the person puts their finger here, right? Cause I'm doing the whole kit. And then if they respond and they go weak, then I go one by one and we figure out which one it was or which ones, it could be more than one. So then if they put their finger on the plastic, then I'm like, okay, we do need to help the body detox plastic, which includes supporting the detox pathways plus trying to do your best to not use it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'm so grateful that you taught us about this. I, I you know, I'm, I'm really excited about this and I'm gonna be doing it a lot. And um, I guess people are gonna see me at supermarkets and at restaurants going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and it's great to know that you could put it in your hand or keep it on your lap. I mean, you gave us a lot of really great options. And I'll tell you the truth, I can't wait to go to the healing arts facility. I don't know how many of the people here are in New York City that they could do that, but um, I think that that would be fantastic. Could you, before we, before we end, could you tell us some of the services, some of the things you're doing there? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm lucky to have just expanded. Um, and I've always just had treatment rooms doing the nutrition and the chiropractic, but in this new space, I really wanted to build a healing center and it was all about detox, right? Like how do, can I help patients detox? And so we have an ozone sauna. And so, you know, sweating it out with the heat of the sauna, but then also ozone is the extra oxygen putting in to help the body. So we're really excited about that. And we have a Himalayan salt uh, booth. And I, of course, wanted one of the treatment rooms to be a Himalayan salt room, but I figured since it's still COVID, I should just get a booth and start from there. And that way people feel more safe in it. But the idea of the Himalayan salt booth is you breathe in the Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt has a lot of trace minerals in it. So it's very healthy for you. And so it's very good for any type of breathing issues. And, you know, I used to have asthma, but also any type of skin issues. And it's really good uh, just rejuvenating the body. And we have massage and we have the chiropractic. So the muscles and joints are, in, you know, are being supported, but we also have a lymphatic drainage massage. And so literally it's a special machine actually that uses electrons to over your skin to move the fluid and to help support the lymphatic system, which carries the toxins. So like I just talked about, if you're having trouble detoxing, part of it might be because the lymphatic system is clogged up. Um, so the lymph is really important and to try to help people with that. Yeah, you know, um, I've tried the salt room and I thought that when I, it sounded like it was crazy and I had a little bit of a cold when I went into one and I was shocked that it was over. I see that a few more questions are coming across. Yeah, we have, uh, what about your phone? I responded weak to it and in the past an NRT specialist recommended an EMT blocker. Is there anything else? Uh, nope. Uh, the, what she's talking about is the phone gives off electromagnetic frequencies. And so uh, radiation, you know, off of the computer, off of the phone. Yeah, you guys can muscle test your phone. See if the radiation actually bothers you or not. Um, it may or may not. Uh, mine does not bother me, but uh, it's because, yeah, I have a special sticker on it um, that actually blocks it. Um, not all the stickers work, and I know it sounds weird, but the idea is some sort of cancellation so that the radiation waves don't hit you. You know, just like a radio wave or a microwave, you know, these radiation things are hitting you, causing disturbances in your nervous system. Um, so some stickers work, some stickers don't work. So um, if you want more information, contact me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is a real thing. I heard that there's jewelry that you can wear. 
Yeah, so there is, it's uh, specific, specifically called a Q-link. And that way it goes into the Q-link, you know, the metal of the jewelry. Um, Orgon uh, is also something uh, that can, you can put, I don't have a piece now, but uh, it's a not jewelry, but a piece of, uh, well, almost like, um, it has crystal with metal and the electrons play off of each other. You can put next to your computer. Oregon, O-R-G-O-N? Yes. Cool. Yeah. And do we have to worry about 5G or how to protect yourself from 5G? Uh, 5G is like, when I look at the research and I realize what it does and all the extra electromagnetic frequencies that are gonna go in the air and how much more towers are in the air, it's kind of scary. Um, but then I take a deep breath and I think to myself, you know what, we've, you know, our bodies have survived the radio waves, our bodies have survived, you know, the microwaves, like, okay, the body will figure out how to handle this and survive this as well. But I literally think of the body's biochemistry having to change. And I definitely feel like, you know, uh, the kids um, don't react as much as the adults. Like their bodies yeah. are more flexible. Their neurons can fire differently. That um, I'm like, I'm worried for us in 5G. I'm not worried about the future in the 5G. Like I think uh, it's just part of evolution. Yeah. And one more question that I had was, um, for, you know, protection for vaccinations. Like how do you, you know, we, we want them to be good and healing, but how do we minimize the downside? So, okay, vaccinations, okay. <laughs> you don't know how long or how much I talk about vaccinations all day long because everyone's nervous about the COVID vaccine. Some of my patients have no problem taking it. They're excited about it. Um, I personally am glad that it's out there, um, but it's almost like, well, let's wait six months. Let me muscle test a hundred patients and figure out how to handle this. There is heavy metals and there is heavy chemicals in the vaccines. Um, I'm very good at detoxing all the other vaccines. Um, you know, that's something that I look for. Um, so, so far, it's only been probably like seven patients of mine have gotten the vaccine, uh, both different types, um, different ages, all female, and I haven't had an issue detoxing. The, the idea is to take homeopathy to detox the heavy metal, detox the heavy chemical and not have an issue. Like it doesn't interfere with actual antibodies and the virus aspect to it. Um, so, I mean, it's premature, but I feel like, you know, the vaccine is like any other vaccine, which is good to see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're excited to keep in touch. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, thanks guys for coming. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Really informative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.